Yeah, we get a double buy going into the Big Ten tournament because, of course, we do. We've deserved it. That's right. So we're going to talk about that. Michigan State gets a nice win on senior day on Saturday. Brandon Jordan is leaving the football program. And then let's talk a little bit of hockey. Why not? Big day. Our Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes. Do you smell it? Do you feel it? Can you sense it? March is in the air. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Locked on Spartans, your team in green and white five days a week. It might even be more than five days a week this week with Michigan State in the Big Ten tournament having a double bye. We are going to have a hoot and a half in these next few weeks. Before getting into the show, hey, please rate, review, and subscribe to this here YouTube channel or podcast any way you digest this thank you so much uh now let's just get into just smelling the marsh flowers because <laughs> oh man um michigan state after the iowa game where they lost like in historic fashion i read on spartans illustrated you know where i do some work of course paul fanson wrote i believe this is what he wrote uh that it was a four percent chance for michigan state to get the double bye in the Big Ten tournament after losing that game. Okay, after a lot of wacky things happened earlier in the week, like Minnesota erasing a 12-point deficit to beat Rutgers, you had a few other little upsets along the way. Michigan State went into Sunday needing three things to happen. Okay, Nebraska, as 11.5-point underdogs at Iowa, one with Michigan State's vengeance on the mind. Okay, that was one thing. Penn State, they were down 12 points at halftime okay they rally back and beat maryland at the buzzer purdue okay well they were up 21 points at halftime against illinois at home easy does it Uh uh-oh they were only up three points with like two minutes to go they almost blew that game but since those three things happen michigan state is a four seed in the big 10 tournament because of course they are uh nothing makes sense in march so yeah, to have a 4% chance at this happening, 4-ish, I, I should say. I'm not exact on that number, but it was slim. This is like hanging out with your buddies. You, Someone in the group has a 12-game parlay. They just strung together. It's like, hey, check this out. This is bet $1 to win $3.1 scrillion, and y'all laugh about it, and then it just blows up after the first game. MSU getting the double bye is kind of like hitting one of those because it was a comedy of games that had to happen. And they, they did. And it could have gotten better, too. If Rutgers beat Northwestern, MSU would have been the three seed. But Rutgers scored uh, 12 points on their senior day. And Boo Booey, just one last punch in the stomach for Michigan State fans. He had a great game against Rutgers. So MSU, just a four seed. But you will take that. You would absolutely positively take that. So they play 230-ish on Friday. Uh, and they will take on the winner of Iowa, who takes on the winner of Wisconsin, or Ohio State. So that will be Michigan State's first round Big Ten tournament game. Now, why am I so geeked about the double bye? Well, I, yeah, it goes without saying you get to play last games, but in the 23 Big Ten tournaments, only four teams have won the whole thing outside of having a top four seed. So 19 of 23 winners, yes, were a top four seed going into the Big Ten tournament. So there you have it. That's why the double buy is so exciting to have. Um, also, none of this happens. None of this double buy nonsense happens without Michigan State well taking care of their business on Saturday in an 84 to 78 win against Ohio State. Um, a six point game and the spread was six and a half. This is what a lot of people expected it to be, but honestly, never felt all that tight. Yes, Ohio State did cut it to three at the very end, but. I don't know. Maybe I was just wrapped up in the senior day magic. You know, the the romance around that, that, hey, everything's going to be okay. We've won the last 10 senior day games. It's not going to happen. So I don't know. Even though it was cut pretty close there, it just seemed like the team was under control the entire game and responded immediately with an answer on their end of the court. And it was a, a great day overall, right? It was a celebration. Today is a celebration, as Mark D'Antonio once said. Um, all seniors starting, all four seniors started 
the game. Uh, Malik Hall, he had 10 points. Joey Hauser, 16 points, 6 rebounds. Tyson Walker, 15 points and 6 assists. And the fourth senior that started, Jason Whitens, he, he got a foul like 20 seconds into the game. He didn't waste any time getting on the stat sheet. So good on you, Jason Whitens. No points, but hey, let's not let's not have zeros on the box score here. That's right. Way to show attendance. Um, AJ Hogard. I guess we should talk about him too. Uh, the guy that was not the senior, just 23 points. Yeah, you know, just a team high 23 points. And the way he scored too was is what you want to see. As you head into March, and no, I'm not just talking about those two baseline three-pointers that he did have. You know, of course, that's nice to see your point guard, who's a 29-ish percent shooter, hit some threes every once in a while, but attacking the paint. All right, he had four buckets inside the paint, slashing through the lane, and also because of that, because of that aggression to the hoop, nine free throws. That's great. Um Sorry that it wasn't 10 out of 11 from the line. If you did have Michigan State 6.5, that last free throw was a little costly for some. But 9 of 11 free throws, that is what you want to see out of A.J. Hogar just getting to the line. And, hey, how about this to boot? 7 assists and 1 turnover. Now, uh, we will be having this next conversation more and more as the season ends, whether that's, you know, Early in two weeks, whether that's four weeks from now, whatever that is, about who's going to come back to this team and who's not. But just to talk about it for Senior Day here and a little anecdote at the end I got from a listener, actually. Uh, this is the way I sliced it up. Joey Hauser, I would assume, is gone. 90 to 95% chance gone. Malik Hall, I keep saying I think he's going to be the coin toss, but he did a, a story with Lancet State Journal, and those comments that he left seemed a little definitive that he might leave, so... I would give that like 55 to 60%. And what I mean by that, it was like, hey, I've had great times here. I'm always going to remember the people that I've met here. You know, just stuff like that. But he does have room to come back next year. And then Tyson Walker, I think, comes back. And this is actually, uh, my confidence is bolstered by a listener that I was very fortunate to meet on Sunday. I was at the zoo. Someone says, hey, do you have a podcast? And I'm like, oh, my God, I, I do. This is crazy that I'm meeting the, the one listener of this. This is amazing. Um. He was at the game. We talked a little bit. He was at the game, and as the crowd was chanting one more year, one more year, Tyson Walker was pumping the crowd up, and Ryan saw his parents also chanting one more year as well. So, of course, you know, it could just be wrapped in the moment, the hullabaloo of everything happening. But I'd rather have the parents cheer one more year than have them being like, what the hell are you people talking about? No, we're not doing one more year here. No, so uh, it would be delightful to have a guy that's shooting like, what, 44 45% from three, who's an amazing defender as well, come back. So that's the early read on that. Um, also, hey, as we are now in the first week of March, let's talk about bracketology and what this all means. And also, a little teaser for later in the week, we will be talking with Joe Cook Sugar of 131 Sports. Later on this week, he's one of the best bracketologists in the land so more in depth as we get closer to the big 10 tournament but right now as it stands when we all woke up on sunday bracket matrix now if you don't know what bracket matrix is there's dozens of bracketologists out there they compile it all they average out the seeds and michigan state was the second seven seed per bracket matrix uh there's a few bracketologists that had them as high as eight and then there was one bracketologist just one but we love this one that had MSU as a five seed. So yeah, you want to feel some Spartan fever. Uh, that bracketologist is absolutely feeling it. But right now, uh, a seven seed is the consensus. And hey, we reference this website all the time. Bart Torvik, very fun to play around with. You can, okay, they beat Iowa in the first round. They lose to Purdue. Or if you want to get nuts, okay, they beat Iowa. They beat Purdue. They beat Indiana. Where would they be seated? Let's go through all that right now. Let's start with the fun one first, okay? Right now, Bart Torvik also has Michigan State as a seven seed. If they win their three Big Ten tournament games, Bart Torvik has you as a four seed. Has you as a four seed. Now, if you lose in the title game, they say you're a five seed. If you lose in the semifinal against Purdue after beating Iowa, they say you're the first seven seed and also lose just immediately in the first round to Iowa pretty squarely in the middle of a seven seed there. So no, that is not the answer key. It's not the end all be all, but that is what the computers say. Again, out of way computers against a human committee, but it's pretty close to what it could actually be. So that is what we are looking at as we uh, venture into a nice, shorter, 
Big Ten tournament because, yeah, that double bye. That double bye. Go Huskers. Husker up. Boiler up. Uh, what was the other team? Oh, we are Penn State. God, you guys are the best. Rutgers, thanks for absolutely nothing. Jesus Christ. Anyway, uh, no, we're happy today. Uh, we will be back. We're going to talk maybe a little more basketball. Got to talk about the Brandon Jordan news, all right? It wasn't always sunny in East Lansing. That was a bummer. Uh, but, hey, first got to talk your ear off about Built Bar. That's right. Hey, gang, if you are looking for a delicious treat and one that is going to give you power through March Madness, you got to try Built Bar. All right, right here in front of me, you know the drill. They say, hey, say it tastes as good as a candy bar, but, no, I'm going to shoot you straight. This tastes better than a candy bar. These flavors are dynamite. We're talking flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond. You will find a flavor that you love. And you're also going to love how it makes you feel. All right, most of these Built Bars, just 130 calories, just 4 grams of sugar, but yet a whopping 17 grams of protein. You're not going to feel all bogged down after having one of these. You're not going to feel all jittery because of the sugar like some of the old-fashioned protein bars. You're going to feel light, but you're going to feel powerful after wolfing down one of these. So what are you waiting for? Go to Built.com or go to Walmart, go to Sam's Club, go to their pharmacy section. You can find them in the pharmacy section. Get a four-bar box or, hey, do it the old-fashioned way, Built.com. Find the flavor you love, cookies and cream, double chocolate, coconut puff, whatever it is. Go to Built.com, Sam's Club, or Walmart to get your Built bars. Now let's uh, – yeah <laughs> – we got to riff on the football a little bit here uh, because even though it is the first week of March, football is still here to hurt us apparently. Um, in the middle of the game, in the middle of the MSU Ohio State game, the news broke that Brandon Jordan, that's right, the cat's pajamas of assistant coaches at Michigan State, great recruiter. Of course, he was the pass rush specialist on the staff, trained a bunch of NFL players, had them all out to East Lansing, got a lot of great recruits in the door in his one year at Michigan State. You know where I'm going with this. You probably already saw the news. He's out of here. Sayonara, Gonzo, just threw up the deuces, and uh, he's heading to the NFL. He is taking a role, similar role, uh, with the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, would love to sugarcoat this. Would love to say, ah, that's fine. Good riddance. But like, I think that'd be very disingenuous after talking up and down the last however many months that this guy has been awesome for us. <laughs> this guy has just killed it in his role. He was here for one year and he got the most of his out of his one year. And God, if there is any silver lining about this, if there is any silver lining about this, you know, we're trying to be positive. It's a fun show today. At least he went to the pros, right? At least he went to the NFL. Um, Stephen Brooks of 24-7 Sports, he reported that, you know, Colorado was hot after him. Texas A&M was hot after Brandon Jordan. I'm sure a smattering of other colleges were after Brandon Jordan after seeing what he did in East Lansing in just his one year. So it's good he didn't jump to a different college because just optic-wise, not even optic-wise, just even just fact of the matter-wise, that, that would have been that would have been a tough blow especially if he went to Colorado. Um, oh, that would have left a bad taste in the mouth. So, no, he went to the NFL, and you could swallow that pill maybe a little better if you're a Michigan State fan. Um, because, yeah, for a lot of these guys, that is the goal to go to the NFL. And also, let's not get it twisted. Being an NFL coach is night and day different than being a college coach. All right, as a college coach, you got to recruit all right, you have to deal with the roster. You know, at the NFL, you have someone doing that for you. You have someone in the NFL level dealing with salary cap, which is like now probably a thing in college if we can be adults about this. Um, so, yeah, it is an easier job, so to speak, I guess, in the NFL. You can see why it's more desirable to go out there than, you know, hang around in college. It's not for everyone. A lot of people like college more than NFL, but yeah. Uh, Brandon Jordan in a uh, tweet that he had. Said as much that ever since he was a kid, it was his goal to get to the NFL. So good for him. Uh, you know, hoping for the best for him. He did a lot of good stuff here in his short time here. The recruiting class next year of By Job, Andrew DePape, Jalen Thompson. And of course, we'll throw in Texas AM transfer to Mise Adelaide. Also did great work with Jacoby Winman in his one year here. Of course, Jacoby Winman's coming back next year, but the one year both were together. Uh, he got Chris Bogle out of the transfer portal as well. Okay, like th these are these are big names, and these are things that don't happen without Brandon Jordan. And I know that there might be some people in the industry that think like, well, maybe he wasn't 
as dynamic of a recruiter as we all think. Maybe he was just more of a, hey, let me introduce you to this guy, and then you guys take it from here. But at least you have someone opening the door for these recruits. So we'll see what it means, though. I mean, I, it, it would be foolish to not sit here and think like, huh, wonder what that means for five-star David Stone. Hmm. Okay, because this isn't the first defensive line coach that has also left the staff this season, too. Marco Coleman went back down to Georgia Tech as well. So, yes, you brought on Dyron Reynolds, guy from Stanford. That's great. Great track record. People speak very highly of him. But he's also on a one-year contract. I wonder if they try to extend that just to tell every recruit that there is some continuity that is going to be at your position here. I digress. Um, where, where is that? Oh, yeah, David Stone. You worry about David Stone, what that does for his recruitment. And also, too, like, I, I do got to think about what that means for By Job, Andrew DePape, Jalen Thompson. Like, they came here, and maybe they didn't come here because of Brandon Jordan, but I'm sure it had something to do with it. I mean, they are some of the best recruits that this class has, so – Hopefully they're very happy their first year. Hopefully whoever comes in really just sells, hey, stay here. We're just as good as a coach. Or, hey, maybe I'm wrong and maybe they latch onto a different coach completely and, you know, this thing is all overblown. But, yeah, this this was a bummer. And, uh, yeah, it just – it does hurt that it was only one year. Um, because Mel took – maybe a risk is a bad word, but it was an unorthodox move of what Mel Tucker did. Uh, instead of, you know, getting a college coach through the ranks like that, he went out and got this independent trainer of this position, brought him in. He was never on a college staff, at least if he was not as big as Michigan State. And they said, hey, let's give this a try and see if it works. And it was working. It was working great. And it is a shame that one year we're already done with it. And I, I really don't want to sound like I'm saying, uh, oh, how dare he be ungrateful to Mel and just ditch town immediately. Like, no, I look, when your dream job comes calling, you should probably answer that call. I get 100% why he did it. But yeah, just as a fan, uh, oh, and I'm sure Mel's thinking like, oh, just one year, but and that, that it is what it is. Um, of course, you also get the chatter, too. Uh, this comes from rival fans. I, I would have done the same thing, I think, if the tables were flipped. They're like, oh, wow, Brandon Jordan used Michigan State as a stepping stone. Oh, that's not a destination school. Well, yeah. Yeah. Of course, he was a positional coach at a college. That's no one's dream job in life. No one wants to just stick around and just be a positional college coach for 5, 10, 15 years like Look at Georgia and Alabama. Their coaches are fleeing town all the time because they use their platforms as well to spring into higher jobs like coordinator positions, maybe NFL jobs as well. So, oh, Brandon Jordan, oh, it, Sparty was just a stepping stone. Yes, that like every other positional coach, especially as young as Brandon Jordan, uses programs. It turned out pretty well, though, for us. Yes, it was just one year, but... Okay, if, if you're giving me that as your one year, I, I guess I take it, I, I suppose. So where does MSU go from here now that Brandon Jordan uh, has left a hole in the coaching vacancies? Um, from what I know, you know, talking through a few people uh, over at Spartans Illustrated, the fellas at 24-7 Sports as well. Uh, I don't think I'm spilling any massive secret here, but it's not going to necessarily be another defensive line coach. Uh, it will be the best one available, whether that's the offensive side of the ball, defensive side of the ball. Look, uh, we'll see who is even available because kind of like when Mel Tucker was hired here at Michigan State, he was against the ropes hiring some people because it was a really awkward time in the offseason. And that's where we kind of are right now. Um, now, if I can just throw a name out really quick, and maybe this is a name only 16 people will know, but uh, S, S, uh, sorry, C4 Cooper is what he goes by on Twitter. I believe his name is Sean Cooper. He works out all the Oklahoma offensive linemen, uh, the high school kids. We're talking guys like David Stone. We're talking guys like By Job. I mean, okay, I, getting the hottest trainer in town seemed to work for one year with Brandon Jordan. I don't know. Let's kick the tires and see if we can open up more doors to great trench players with a guy like Cooper, for example. So that's, that's just one name. Odds they hire him, probably very slim. I don't even know if he's on their board. But uh, if I could just uh, be one idiot behind a microphone throwing out one name, that's the name I'm going to go with. Just keep on bringing in top flight trainers and see, see how it – keep doing it until it stops working. All right. Um, it worked the one year in Lansing, and that's why the NFL came calling. 
They were like, oh, God, yeah, this is great. Let's get him up to the NFL ranks. Um, all right, happier times uh, to talk about right now. We're going to the ice arena. That's right. Uh, Michigan State went down to Notre Dame. That's all right. They, they were the road team, best of three series, opener of the Big Ten tournament, lost the first game 1-0. All right, once again, Michigan State couldn't win a Big Ten tournament game. But the boys rally back 4-2, to 4-2, to two, the first Big Ten tournament series victory in Michigan State history. All of this in Adam Nightingale's first year. And what comes to mind for a lot of fans, whether you are a diehard fan or whether you're just like a casual fan, just peeking at hockey from the inside out, you're wondering, what does this do for the NCAA tournament? That's right. That field is just 16 teams. That is a tight field. Understandably so. There's a lot less hockey teams than there are basketball teams or football teams, for example. So uh, I reach out to my two fellow resident Michigan State hockey experts, Brad LaPlante of Spartans Illustrated, and then Jer Bear, Jeremy Dewar. Of course, he's the best. Um, and I just basically said, like, talk to me like an idiot right now. What does this series mean for Michigan State's NCAA tournament hopes? And they're pretty aligned with one another. I asked them separately. Like, this wasn't a, a group chat. This wasn't group think by either of these guys. Um, and Brad said that, well, pretty much they need to win next weekend. Which, great. Hey, you know, how hard can it be? Um, turns out pretty hard because now that they've beat Notre Dame, they have a one-game elimination. Weird how they do that. Best of three for the first round. Single-game elimination for the semifinal. Uh, they got to go to Minnesota. Minnesota's the number one team in the country uh when michigan state has played minnesota on the road this year did not go quite well and right now in the pairwise rankings uh this is the top 16 teams michigan state is right right on the outside okay i think they sit at 16 but they need to be in the top 15 because there's a conference i think it's the atlantic conference um just some mickey mouse conference they get an automatic qualifier None of their teams are in the top 16. So that's that's why they got to be in the top 15. Pretty much the only way for Michigan State to get up there is by beating Minnesota on the road to make the NCAA tournament. So this is uh, just what has been told to me by both Brad and then uh, Jer Bear also said, a win next week should be enough. So that is what we are looking for. Now, of course, there is a scenario where a lot of teams can lose games ahead of them and then get scooted back in those rankings. Kind of like how us Michigan State basketball fans a few days ago were looking at 13 games with some crazy upsets in those 13 games and wondering, huh, all this has to happen to get a double bye. It'll never happen. I, all, all hope is not lost. Um, so really quick, just in the clinching game, just want to highlight a few names here. Uh, Michigan State got a pair of goals and an assist from senior Nicholas Mueller. And then the go-ahead goal from Jeremy Davidson. Jeremy Davidson also had one goal and one assist in game two as well. So, hey, there you have it. And, uh, again, you guys know me. I'm very open about this when we do talk hockey. This is why I have Brad LaPlante on. This is why I have Jeremy Dewar on. I like hockey. It's fun to watch. I'm not the expert whatsoever. That's why I have experts on to talk about it. But you don't need to be an expert to recognize the greatness that Adam Nightingale has brought to this program in just one year. Uh, whether it's any of the recruiting chats, sorry, the recruiting chats that we have with Jeremy Dewar or Brad LaPlante or really any hockey recruiting website you go on, Sparty is up there, man. Uh, they are doing great. And just the fact in year one, of the Nightingale era, we are talking about maybe, maybe going to the NCAA tournament. I mean, not to take a moral win before the team even loses on Saturday, but like just the fact this is even a conversation, that is a lightning fast, just philosophy shift, culture shift, play shift right there. So Michigan State Hockey has been in the basement for quite some time. You heard me just say it a few minutes ago, never won a Big Ten tournament series. Now they have just won one in Eddie Nightingale's first year, and they're knocking on the door of the NCAA tournament. A lot of these players are young guys, and just like, you know, we've been talking about all year, the recruiting is on the rise too. So massive, massive tip of the cap to Adam Nightingale. Um, and the, the Icy Spartans, uh, it will be on Big Ten Network this Saturday. Stay tuned. Um, God, that's going to be an exciting one. So eh, crazier things have happened, and it's March. Maybe crazy things just aren't limited to basketball. 
That's right. Maybe this could be an all sports thing. So take that into the rest of your week game. We got a packed week coming up. We're going to be talking. Uh, actually, I'm going to try to get uh, one of the hockey guys on here before the game Saturday, but back to basketball. Uh, we're going to get the bracketologist, Joe Cook Sugar, on the show. We're going to be talking with my good friend, Jake Schemmel. He was a student manager under Tom Izzo for the 2015 Final Four. We're just going to talk about what it's like in the weeds during tournament time being a team manager and team member. Um, God, we're just good. We're gonna have a fun week, guys. Uh, this is a hoot and a half. I just, oh, I love how happy uh, we all are right now. As horrible as we felt last weekend, losing that insane game against Iowa, and then let's talk about this too. Um, also, watching Wisconsin blow their game against Michigan, how bad we felt that weekend is how great we all feel right now. And this is the beauty of sports. And this is the magic of March. The mood swings are unbelievable. They are unhealthy, but we come crawling back every single time. And I hope you come crawling back to another episode of Lockdown Spartans. You guys are truly the best. Thank you so much for being part of this community. You guys are awesome. Love every single one of you. Go have a great week. Woo, go green. Let's go.